Hi there, this is Ron Rogers, and to all my loyal Great Lakes open cockpit aerobatic fans, I've got my first video of flying aerobatics when I had the completed center section AD accomplished. The airplane is once again cleared to fly aerobatics. Now, of course, I hadn't flown aerobatics for just about a year, so I was pretty rusty. And um, I'm working with the uh, GoPro trying to get the good data here. And it's not coming across too impressive, especially if you look at that altitude trace there. Um, I really don't know what the problem is. Uh, this is a GoPro 9. I don't know if later ones are better than this. But the airspeed here is fairly accurate. The G is kind of like whatever. Okay, that's just bouncing around. And they uh, basically think that you know as a human you don't get subject to more than two g's which of course in aerobatics isn't true at all but the other thing here and uh you know i'm getting back into the swing of things here and part of the problem uh that i experienced was i uh, i you know there's a plethora of camera settings on on the gopro and um, I, I, had, uh, I had one wrong, well, two wrong actually here. I had the field uh, of view a little more narrow than I intended. Um, didn't get that quite right. But the one that's really uh, kind of throws a monkey wrench here, it's almost good because my aerobatics is, is pretty rusty. And so the fact that the camera is doing this trying uh, automatic leveling where it's trying to keep the horizon level. You see there, um, I'm in a bank. Uh, so the airplane's moving and the horizon is level, and that's not really what you want, especially in the uh, more uh, dynamic pitch movements where the nose really moves around quite a bit and there's quite a bit of banking. This, this really uh, uh, gets very annoying, <laughs> let's put it that way. It just doesn't work properly at all. But I'm going west of the city here where I keep the airplane and I'm uh, doing my clearing turns and I always like to start out with a loop. Now there's one maneuver in here that I do very badly. See the problem is I I always revert back. Um, I had like 500 hours teaching in Satabras and Decathlons and they require a lot more control power and uh, this airplane, the Great Lakes, is just very powerful control wise okay here we go into the loop and the airspeed's pretty good it's about a 130 entry there and i'm pulling back checking the wing tips uh pulling it up but here we get the auto leveling thing and it looks like i'm in a bank and okay there we're coming out and you can see that my wing tip is a my uh, wing is aligned with the horizon now it figures it out and of course i get slow over the top but i come back to the speed 130 again but for some reason it's pegged low speed and there i do another loop and of course with the uh, auto leveling there yeah, and see it comes back it i i think it doesn't really know what quite uh, what uh, quite to do there so here's an aileron roll and of course it's got the same little thing there and you can see my little uh red uh, uh strap there i've got uh, the uh, the color coded i've got a, a red one and a green one just like the landing lights I mean the uh, navigation lights, so I know which one is on, but red should be right, but red is left because le red is navigation lights on the left side. But anyway, uh, that's to help me get my straps on without getting them confused. So, yeah, that wasn't too bad. Aileron roll there, getting a little bit of, uh, um, you know, checking things out here again. And uh, now I'm pulling up, uh, I here's the moment, and you see the... You hear that with the engine there a little bit, uh, and that strap went. I got real negative because I, I pushed too hard. I pulled to the inverted point, and I was going to do the roll, and I just pushed too hard. And uh, actually, I went kind of vertical there. Um, yeah, I went uh, negative G, and also uh, just uh, just waited to the thing flop out of flopped out of it. And you could hear from the prop sound that uh, uh, the airplane was kind of flailing around like I was. So anyway. Uh, enough of that. Back to do a, a few more aerobatic uh, maneuvers here. And I'm going to, uh, no, I need to get a little more uh, altitude here. I got my 1500 foot floor uh, that I have to, um, of course, uh, adhere to. That's the FARs. I don't have any special waivers. And uh, um, uh, of course, I, I don't want any special waivers because uh, uh, it's, it's good to have <laughs> the, uh, the airspace there in case something got uh, screwed up. But anyway, uh, now it's uh, it's holding there with the 2G. I'm doing a, a hammerhead there. You see the wing slice through, a little down vertical line. 
now pulling back up to uh, uh, level flight there and uh, doing a little clearing turn maneuvering around and you notice the airspeed is just nowhere where it should be All right, that's enough of that. We're going to get just a little more uh, altitude here for the next maneuver. All right, so doing clearing turns, always very important. There's a lot of student flight activity out here, and I put my uh, Garmin 660 on the uh, traffic mode and uh, put the scale uh, to about two miles there so I can observe anybody getting close. Of course, you, uh, you clear visually, but you know there's the old open field myopia where your eyes tend to focus at about six feet unless you look at something on the ground and scan out. So, you know, the see and avoid uh, is, uh, gets, kind of, gets kind of interesting there. Uh, it doesn't work all that well, and the ADSB is fairly good unless you got somebody uh, that doesn't have a transponder, but I'm near enough O'Hare that pretty much everybody has transponders. And you notice again the, the airspeed is um, just... You know, I mean, it's it's giving you a ground speed, but it is, it is way off. And here's a the hammerhead again. That it's absolutely one of my favorite maneuvers. Uh, I like the way uh, you pull it up vertically till you just about run out of airspeed. Do the wing over. Uh, you get a nice slice on the thing. Uh, a little bit of a vertical downline as you're straight down with uh, very low airspeed. Hold it for a second, and then you can pull it out. So that's just. Uh, that's just a really fun maneuver, and uh, I could I could do those all day. Um, but uh, 20 minutes of aerobatics or so, uh, and this is a, a little bit abbreviated here, um, is uh, is uh, is quite a bit. Uh, you know, I'm not the uh, the young person I used to be, but you know, three G's isn't bad, and a negative one or two G's isn't really uh, too difficult to do. So. Um, but you notice the, the altitude there. Now, I'm, I'm a very skilled acrobatic pilot because if you look closely at the altitude chart, you see I have the ability to actually do aerobatics underground. I am several thousand feet below ground, apparently from that altitude readout. Um, so, um, I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, uh, decided to have a little fun here uh, still. And you notice the auto... Uh, uh, sensing there. Now there's an Immelman that comes out a lot better. I didn't get the, the nose as high when I started. I brought it right about down to the horizon, which you used to not be able to do in a Satabra Decathlon. You just didn't have the power. And then I go right into a split S. Uh, you're below 80 knots on that. You just pull the power back and uh, pull it on through. That's a nice little fun maneuver. I like to couple the Immelmans with the split S because uh, when you come out of the Immelman you're at a very low airspeed and that just really sets you up and you're at the you know uh, the top of the loop uh, so doing a, um, a a split S takes you right uh, right back down where you can enter in uh, another over the top maneuver whatever you want to do and it's just a absolute beautiful day got the airplane back having fun with it uh, went out to do some work in the hangar today and uh, I needed to work on my tug. I kind of screwed it up there. Oh, there's a nice little aileron roll. And you notice know, the auto uh, leveling there just messes that up. But I had to fix my toe there. I, uh, tug. I spent most of the afternoon doing that. And, um, uh, but it was like almost 90 degrees in the hangar. And I was just sweating like a pig. But my wife says, being a farmer's daughter, she says pigs don't sweat. So anyway, I digress. But anyway, uh, it was just getting way too much. So I decided I'd come back and uh, in the nice air-conditioned home and uh, uh, do some uh, videos. And I, I had one person suggest that, um, you know, I was, uh, I was taking video but not uh, um, putting it on the site. Because uh, every time I fly, I take video uh, just in case uh, you know, something happens that I want to go back and analyze later, um, I've got the video. So it's it's simply nice to, to have that. And uh, uh, somebody said, well, don't just 
you know dump that just put it on put it on the uh, uh, you know your YouTube channel and show it because uh, you know for people who used to live in the Crystal Lake area and there are quite a few of those and some people who still do it's kind of nice just to see uh, the surroundings there and you notice now uh, the airspeed is more accurate um, I guess it takes a while to settle down and I guess the GoPro really does not like um, the aggressive maneuvering. I don't know if anybody out there is, is experienced with the um, more advanced ones, uh, if they do a better job on this, but um, my GoPro 9 is not happy. Of course, I have the other issues of the battery overheating. Uh, that's why I run it off a of ship's power now, and then I don't have that problem, because uh, as you know on the GoPro, um, the unit itself gets hot, the battery generates heat discharging, and the two of them together uh, get to the point where the uh, GoPro overheats, and to protect itself, it just shuts down. Uh, and it does that like 30 to 45 minutes of operation. Even in the slipstream like that, where it's getting, you know, uh, cooling air, it, it still does it, because this one I don't have in the case, uh, just to, I, I, I did it without the case to see uh, if that would have an effect on uh, cooling air because you put it in the plastic case it's somewhat insulated you know so you're not getting the cooling air but here I am coming back into the the lake and the hills uh, pattern and uh, it's starting to fill up we have we have a lot of student activity here so it's starting to fill up with the students coming back so uh, I uh, you know on the first part where I did the touch and goes I kind of had the pattern to myself and away I went and uh, just did a bunch of patterns till uh, um, the uh, pattern started to fill up with the uh, the waves of the student. It seems like they they uh, they plan the lessons about at the same time because they tend to launch in droves and then uh, uh, do some patterns, leave often for air work, and then they come back in droves. So. Uh, uh, you can you can get a nice quiet time at times uh, where you can get some good pattern work in there but uh, at other times it just gets super congested and of course being students um, they're taught to fly wider patterns uh, you know I have a little digression on that but I start out in the Air Force where uh, you know you're taught to fly a very tight and efficient pattern but um, anyway uh, I'm not going to get on my uh, cross country in the traffic pattern soapbox there but uh, it's easy for the patterns to get extended and you know just makes it a mess especially with a biplane that once you pull the power it wants to come down and and you know you have the visibility issues with both wings there but um, interestingly enough it you do have a lot of good visibility and you can see off to the left there is uh, the runway and I'm landing to the west on runway 26 and there's the uh, all the little hangars down there going uh, out of the picture and the airspeed's fairly accurate the ground speed at uh, 91 miles per hour I'm, I'm doing about 75 but because with the uh, the uh, on uh, downwind I'm getting a tailwind so um, I'm uh, uh, forced to uh, you know I'm, I'm going to uh, show a higher ground speed and there we have the Three Oaks recreational uh, area there used to be a gravel pit I was actually on that committee uh, helping switch that over from a gravel pit to a recreational uh, um, area and it really it really is a nice area but I live on Crystal Lake so that's my main uh, fun thing there and I had to go out a little farther this time usually I don't go out quite this far but um, there was some other student traffic and uh, we had a bit of a, cr a crosswind uh, from the south so you can see that's why the uh, the airspeed is picking up there on the uh, the base to final turn and this is this is the view that most people like the pilot's eye view and one thing you can see on this uh, when I when you come in and land is when that nose comes up you just can't see forward that's the, uh, the disadvantage of um, you know a tail dragger aircraft and there's the runway um, coming in on final and the airspeed is yeah, that that depiction is fairly reasonable it was just a little bumpy with the winds in that, but but not too bad. And normally I can uh, come in, I'm doing a three-point this time. In fact, it's my first three-point uh, landing I've done in eight months. And you see that first taxiway went by? I can usually make that, so I'm a little out of practice here, obviously. Um, I can usually make that turn off easily. 
uh, and I did actually the next time I came in on my next flight. Um, and you can see that, that that's got an interesting little aspect on that because uh, I had a guy actually uh, overtake me in the traffic pattern, fortunately below me, and I'll show you that. That kind of got my attention. But uh, of course, here I am exiting the runway and uh, going to take it back uh, to the hangar. So anyway, you can uh, one of the things you can see here, especially if you're familiar with this airport, uh, you know, here I am pulling onto the parallel taxiway. And but basically, uh, once you turn to go down the taxiway, <coughs> you can't see anything. And uh, there, um, uh, you know, if an aircraft comes out under your nose, it is invisible. And most everybody is is very uh, polite here. Um, somebody thought I was doing a uh, taxi back, so uh, they were going to hold uh, in uh, position for me, even though they could have easily pulled out in front of me. But uh, I told them, no, I was going back to the hangar, so just go ahead and pull out. That's a very nice, friendly airport. And yeah, there you can see in the distance. And see how it's obscured by the nose? That's the red airplane that I said, yeah, you guys go ahead, because I'm going back to the hangars. But uh, you see, you gotta, you got to do the S-turns. And these taxiways aren't wide, uh, so you gotta, you got to turn the aircraft on the taxiway back and forth to clear in front of your nose so you don't run over the top of somebody. Um, but you want to make sure that you stay on the taxiway. And of course, you got these little wingtips that don't like... Uh, uh, cute little things like taxi lights off to the side, and there you can see the red airplane. And I'm turning into my um, uh, my small hangar here. I've got the uh, the big hangar for my 310, but this is my small hangar here, and that's an avionics shop there on the field, which is really nice to have. That we got mechanics on the field, uh, two actual um, operations. Uh, Two flight schools, um, Blue Skies is the big one, and, uh, oh, there's my vet there, parked next to uh, uh, the hangars there, and I just come around and uh, spin the tail around to line it up with uh, my hangar so I can uh, attach the tug and uh, put the aircraft back in. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, the aerobatics in spite of the uh, poor camera operation there. And, uh, and all that, but I, I, ho I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.